Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ned Bellavance, Ned1313 on Twitter, and welcome to the Daily Check-In for December 8th, 2020. It is Tuesday, which means it's Terraform Tuesday. You knew it was coming. You know what's going on. You know it's Tuesday. It's been Terraform Tuesday for months, and that's not going to change anytime soon. It's also Taco Tuesday, and you might notice that I'm recording this a little bit later in the day, which means I've already had my tacos, and they were delicious. I smoked a chicken this weekend in my new smoker that I got for my birthday a month ago, and now I'm I had a smoked chicken with delicious meat, and I decided to make some chicken tacos out of it. So it was like smoked chicken tacos. It was outstanding. Highly recommend it. Sorry I'm so excited. It was just really, it was that good. (laughs) So uh, nothing big to plug this week. I'm just chugging along. Things are interesting. Terraform 0.14 dropped, and that is what this video is going to be about, is what's new in 0.14 that I personally find interesting. I did do a video on what was kind of in the release candidate or like the beta of it a while ago, but this is the actual release. It's GA. So let's talk about what's in the release, what's going on. Before we do that, I first want to check in with you. How you doing? How's Tuesday? Trucking along? Are, are, are you having tacos today? I hope you are. Or burritos. I'd also accept enchiladas as a, as a solid meal. Though, I mean, I'm not really going to judge. As long as you're eating something that you enjoy, it's all about you. You enjoy that food. Now let's talk about Terraform 0.14. What's going on in this thing? Well, there are a few, announce- a few enhancements that I wanted to point out, things that I personally am excited about. There's a whole bunch of stuff in there, and I've included the change log down in the description. So if you just want to read through the whole change log and see what's going on, you can do that. That works. But there are a few things that are I'm excited about, and I got some demos to show you how they work. So let me just talk through them quickly, and then we'll go over and check out a demo of how they work. So the first one is marking variables as sensitive. This is, I believe it was an experimental feature in 0.13. It's now an official feature. Basically, what this does is when you mark a variable as sensitive, that means Terraform will treat it in such a way that it's not going to show that value in the output. It's not going to show it in the UI if you're using Terraform Cloud. It's not going to show it in the log files. And when it's doing a plan and that value is being used, if it were going to print out the value as part of the plan output or something, or the apply output, it's not going to include that value. And if you specify it as an output, the output that gets sent to the screen is also going to be obfuscated. I can't say that word. You're not going to be able to see it is the point. So that's kind of cool. The, the, the one caveat on that is it's still going to be written to state. So still treat state as having sensitive data in it and secure it appropriately. The next one is Terraform Providers Lock File. This is an interesting one. So some of the enhancements that happen in 0.13 is when you initialize and download new providers, you can define what provider versions you want. And you used to do that in the block of the provider itself. Now, the preferred way to do that is within the Terraform block, and I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. When you did that, it would also write a JSON file inside the .terraform directory saying what versions you used of that particular provider or module. That seems useful, but it wasn't locked to those, and you couldn't check, you wouldn't check that into source code normally because it was in that .terraform file, and you usually have that set in your git ignore. Now it's going to produce a new file, a .hcl file, that defines all the versions of the providers and the modules you're using, and that's meant to be checked into source code, so you can ensure that the versions that you use in dev are the same that you use in staging and QA and production, and it's all defined in that .hcl file. So that's that's pretty convenient. I, I like that. Okay. And if you do want to upgrade the versions, you're going to have to run Terraform in it with a special flag. So that's another thing that's new. A uh, third thing is that they have now formalized the state file and said that state files written with 0.14 will be forward compatible. They've always been forward compatible, but new versions of Terraform will maintain backwards compatibility with 0.14. So when 0.15 or version 1.0 comes out, state files that are being manipulated with 0.14 
I'm sorry, state files written with that new version will be readable and usable by 0 0.14. So that's kind of cool. That's adding a little more backwards compatibility there, especially if you have different versions of Terraform in your environment. Now you have the opportunity to have state files that are readable across multiple versions. It's not forcing you to upgrade immediately if you know one portion of your organization starts using a new version. Another one that's Kind of cool if you've ever seen the laundry list of things that comes out of a plan or even an apply. They're now introducing this thing called a concise diff. So rather than pumping out every single attribute of a resource that is going to be updated, it's only going to show you the attributes of the resource that are changing and everything else is going to be crunched down. Now you can disable that feature, but it's on by default and it's going to make your output a lot less verbose and more readable. Trust me. That's helpful. Okay, and then the last thing is there are some Terraform console enhancements in terms of how it renders things in the console. It was a little dicey before and apparently they've improved that. Let's go over and take a look at some of the things that I just talked about, all right? So let me go ahead and share out my screen. Here we go. This is my Terraform Tuesday repository. You can find this on GitHub. Link is, of course, in the description. And we're working in the 2020-1208 folder. I've got two subfolders in here, one to show you sensitive variables and the other one to show you the concise diff. So first, let's look at sensitive variables. I've got a simple main.tf file here. I'm defining two variables. You'll notice one is called my secret and it is set with sensitive equal to true. So this is a sensitive variable. The other variable is called plain text and it's just a regular string plain text variable. Now I'm creating two files, two local files. And for the first file, I am using the content of my secret as what's going into that file. And then the file name is actually going to be the secret that I'm storing. So we'll see how that's rendered out when it runs its plan. I'm also creating a regular plain text, a regular uh, plain text file using the plain text variable. So that should be able to render both the content and the file name in the plan. And then finally for secret for the output, I'm going to output both of those variables. And I'm going to show you an interesting feature here. So I'm going to comment out that sensitive equals true. All right, cool. So down below, let's go ahead and run Terraform in it to initialize things and it will download our provider for that file for that local file and you'll see now there's this terraform lock.hcl file that's the new lock file that I was talking about it's a .hcl file and basically here we go this is what is in it the hashes of the terraform. Dot, it's showing us that we're using the local provider and we're using version 2.0 of it and here are the hashes for that provider so you can ensure that you know, if you check this into source code and then you use the same configuration somewhere else, you're going to be using the exact same version of the local provider. That's pretty cool. Like I said, if you run Terraform in it with the, I believe it's the upgrade flag, it will check to see if there's a newer version based off of the versions that you're allowing. And if there is, it will update this HCL file. So you can do that. Another thing I wanna point out is you see how the .hcl file has a U next to it, meaning that Git is detecting this file has a new file that needs to be added to my Git repository, but I may or may not want that to happen. So depending on how you're using this, you may want to add it as to your Git ignore if you're not going to use this feature, or you leave it as is because you do want it to check into your uh, repository and be part of your source code. Okay, so enough about the .hcl file. Let's get back to this and let's go ahead and just run a Terraform plan. And when we run Terraform plan, it's gonna throw an error. Why is it throwing an error? It's saying output refers to sensitive values. So expressions used in outputs can only refer to sensitive values if they have this sensitive equals true. So let's uncomment that and we can run Terraform plan again. And now it's actually gonna render out properly. And you'll see the changes to the output. The output for the plain text still shows in regular text, but the secret is now hidden from us. It's a sensitive value. And if we scroll up and look at the local file for my secret, we can see that the file name is also marked as sensitive and the content is marked as sensitive. And that's because it's all based on that sensitive variable. 
Whereas if we look at the content for the plain text, everything is displayed as we would expect. Now, if I actually run Terraform apply for this, it's going to create the file with the secret file name and the secret data. So obviously some of that information gets written somewhere. Let's go ahead and run a Terraform apply and we'll do uh, auto, I could spell, that would be good, auto approve. Boop. And it should create two files in this directory. We'll wait for that. There we go. Okay, it created the two files. If we look, there's burritos and it says burritos. There's tacos and it says tacos. Oh, that was my secret text, by the way. Of course it was tacos, right? And if we look in terraform.tf state, the secret value is stored in plain text there. So bear that in mind, even though it's labeled as secret, it's still in plain text when it sits in that terraform.tf state file. So you still want to secure that thing pretty darn well. The other thing I wanted to show you was the concise diff for planning. So let's go into this plan folder. There we go. Okay. And what I have in this plan folder, I have a main.tf file here. And basically what this does is create three resource groups and one VNet in Azure because I needed to be able to deploy something. So let's let's get that going. We'll do a Terraform apply uh, auto approve and then we'll look at the file while it's generating the initial uh, infrastructure for us to then plan a change against. So here, the thing that I was talking about, the new way of defining the providers you want to use, it's meant to be done. Well, that's annoying. It's meant to be done in this Terraform block and you're going to have a nested block called required providers. And in that required providers, you can define each provider you want to use the source where you're getting it from. That could be the public registry or it could be, uh, well, the official public registry or a different public registry or a private registry. And then also the version you want to specify for that required providers, which is how it determines what goes in this terraform.lock.hcl file. Okay, cool. It created my virtual network and all of my resource groups. Let's go ahead and make a change, but we're only going to make a change to the tags down in our network. So instead of the cost center being ops, we'll change it to finance because finance is always costing me money. And what I'm going to do is instead run a Terraform plan. And normally you would see when it does the plan, the entire output of that VNet, because we're changing something in the VNet, it would show you every single attribute. That's not necessary. I don't need to see all that. So what did it do? Let's scroll up a little bit here and let me maybe give myself the whole window. It showed us the resource that's being changed and then it hid seven unchanged attributes from us. Not even gonna show you that. It's gonna show us the one attribute that's being changed out of all this. Look at how much smaller the output is for this. That is awesome. That is exactly what I would like out of life. Only show me the things that are changed. Make it more concise for us. So that pretty much wraps it up in terms of the things that I wanted to talk about. We saw the sensitive variables, that's pretty useful. We saw the new Terraform providers lock file, the .hcl file that you're meant to check in the source code. Uh, I'm not gonna show you the future state file versions because there's not a newer version of Terraform to show you that one. <laughs> but we also saw the concise diff renderer that's used for Terraform plans. And then the last thing I didn't mention is that the refresh, refresh cycle for Terraform plan is no longer a whole separate process. It's done on demand for resources. So that's kind of nice too. It means that your Terraform plan and applies should run faster. So all good things, definitely uh, useful changes in 0.14. We're obviously moving towards a 1.0 release because they're not introducing anything crazy. A lot of this is stability and usability work. I'd like to see an even better treatment of sensitive variables, a way to obscure it in TF state. But for right now, you're just going to have to use standard encryption wherever you're storing that state data. So that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. You know, if you have been enjoying these videos and you'd like a way to support me, I have a Patreon and it starts at $2 a patron, $2. So you could support my awful taco habit by getting onto Patreon. The link is down in the description and supporting me at the $2 taco level. I have two levels above that enchilada and big burrito. So if you want to go big, you absolutely can. And then you'll get stickers and mentions in this and everything else. So once again, thank you for watching. Until next time, stay healthy, stay safe. Bye for now.